It's time now for Heart to Heart, brought to you by Zunich Advisory Services. Here's Jackie LeBeau. Good morning, everybody. We're back, and I have a wonderful show for you today. I've been wanting to do this show for a long, long time, and I just couldn't find the right person. And then I reconnected with a friend of mine, uh, Lisa Larson, who I met when we were both going through the certification to be psychic mediums by internationally known psychic medium Lisa Williams. So Lisa is an animal communicator like me and a psychic medium. And she specializes in animals and spirit. She's also a Reiki master. She works full-time in this capacity and is known for her compassion, her honesty, integrity, and ethics. And she is just the right person to have this morning to talk about the topic we're going to address. She works worldwide via phone and webcam in many additional capacities, such as tarot intuitive coach. And I'm gonna to have to have her pronounce some of these other things for me because she's a Huna practitioner and a luck candidate. I know I didn't pronounce that right, Lisa. You'll have to correct that when you come on. A teacher and a mentor. With a lifetime of study and experience in the metaphysical scientists, she can connect you with your animals and loved ones in the afterlife to deliver messages of hope and comfort as well as connecting with your animals and body to correct behavior problems, to help them understand current life situations, and sometimes just to chat, I tell people. I get people who just want to talk. She has a master's degree in human behavior and lives in Carlsbad, California with her husband, Michael, and their two feline fur kids, Cuba and Makana. So Lisa is going to be coming on today. She is going to be helping us talk about pet grief. Because I have to tell you, one of the most frequent uses of animal communication is when guardians are addressing end-of-life issues. So without further ado, let's welcome Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Good morning. Hi. <laughs> so I, as I was saying, I've been so wanting to talk about this issue because I've had um, several clients who have, uh, you know, worked with me with end-of-life issues uh, for their animals. And particularly the ones who don't have a good support system uh, uh, yeah. with family or the ones who go to work and people like just can't figure out like what's the big, big deal, you know, your dog died, you know. Mm -hmm. So and that is so hard on them because for those of us who truly love our animals, you know, they are like our kids. We kid about them being fur kids and people don't want to hear that who don't understand that. But, you know, when you've had an animal in your life that you've been taking care of for, you know, could be 20 years, you know, with some cats. And uh, my goodness, with horses and donkeys. And I mean, you know, they are part of the family. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is absolutely one of the worst. And, you know, it, not only when they don't have a support system, but when they have never, ever had to make the decision of what to do about euthanasia. And that is, it's, it's a terrible decision, but, you know, what I try to explain to people, in fact, I, I talked to somebody just a week ago, and she was saying, well, you know, I feel like I'm killing my cat. And I said, you're not, you're not, or no, she said, I feel like I'm taking my cat's life. And I said, you're not taking your cat's life, you're releasing your cat's life. Because that's what, you know, we as pet parents, when we we don't think about it when we're when we get them and they're small and they're playing and and happy and everything like that but we take on that responsibility of someday we may have to make this decision and i tell people it is the most altruistic decision that they can make because what we're doing is we are we were we are releasing our animals from pain, from the pain and the suffering that they are going through. And, you know, it's one of the few things that, it was one of the few rights that animals have that people don't. Yes, we don't have, we can't make that choice. <laughs> mm -hmm. That's right. And, and you know, it's, it is a terrible decision and it is, it is a terribly difficult decision, but you know, I've also talked to people who, and understandably, they say, well, you know, I want to let them do it naturally. 
but there's a misconception you know and this is not to say that there aren't some animals who would die peacefully in their sleep but Mm -hmm. because animals pass so often in the middle of the night when we're asleep we don't know what they really go through and unfortunately i had that experience my mom could not make that decision and i i i at at one point and i got up there and by the time i got up there i was i was telling her no this is really the time and she just couldn't make the decision and that night i was lying with the cat and um and the cat passed and i won't go into the details but it was not a quiet and smooth passing And I think we sometimes tell ourselves that that's what's going to happen because we don't want to make the decision and we, we, it's just too hard for us. But if we understand that we are actually doing something to help our kitties, to help our puppies, to help our babies, then maybe that makes the decision a little bit easier that that we know that it's we're doing it for them mm-hmm. and we are releasing them from their bodies that are, are that are causing them so much pain rather than taking their lives away. Yeah, you know Lisa, I think those of us who have gone through this, you know, and and I've gone through it many times. We've had over 20 uh dogs. Uh, you know, it's like you have to go through that first time when you struggle with it mm-hmm. and you hold on and hold on. And we'll talk about that, how what that does to our animals when we're like holding on. And after you've gone through that the one time, I remember saying to myself, I will never, ever do that again. Right. Exactly. You know, because I realized what I was doing to this dog that I loved, like my little one. And, and I thought, you know, and at that time what I was... I, what I was really doing to start with, and, and I think it was mostly that I just couldn't let go. She was my, my first doggy. But uh, her daddy was out of the country on business, and I kept saying, just hold on until daddy gets home. Well, you know, it's like I wasn't thinking about what I was asking her to do. Right. Yeah. Right. So, yeah, no, that's absolutely true. And for those of those people out there who have had that experience mm-hmm. and are carrying the guilt of that, I want to help with that as well because we can't know until we know better. Right. You know, and and hopefully we can learn before we have the experience ourselves. Hopefully we can learn by, you know, listening to shows like this and listening to people talk. But if we don't, then we also have to understand that maybe that was, you know, just like us, animals have a life path. And they they come into our lives to teach us things just like we teach them things. Mm -hmm. And it may be that your little dog came to teach you something, maybe without that Without that experience, you wouldn't have gone on to be the animal communicator and the compassionate person that you are knowing all of this. Because what I find is that my own experiences, I I bring all of my own experiences to all that I do in both animal communication and psychic mediumship. Because, you know, I find that people end up calling me for a specific reason, just like they end up calling you for a specific right. reason. Because maybe we've had a, speci- you know, a certain experience in our lives that we will, we will see something through a frame of reference that, and, and be able to say something that just helps make the penny drop. Yeah. Yeah, or or the other thing is that we can truly understand where they mm-hmm. are because we've walked in the same shoes. Exactly, exactly. And I believe that our animals come to, you know, help us with those things. So, you know, for people that are dealing with, you know, oh, the grief of, of you know, maybe I, I didn't do the right thing at the same right time or mm-hmm. whatever, you know, that. That's the way that I look at that, because I think we've all had that experience, you know? I mean, the, it, many people, unless they've had the benefit of somebody helping, have had that experience and of, of not 
doing it soon enough and, and having to learn that way. But you, we have to understand that those, those animals had that life path and that maybe they came to teach us that specific thing. Yeah. But hopefully, hopefully, for, hopefully we, talking about this, can help other people not have that experience and, and learn it in a different way. Right, not learn it in quite the hard way that some of us did. But it's interesting, too, because we talked uh, just briefly about animals' ability to hang on for us when we don't uh. let them go. And I know that's one of the first things I do with mine now when I know that, you know, the time is near. I always say to them, in, in all honesty, and I, and I truly believe it, I just say, you know, you can go whenever you're ready. It's okay with mommy. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm mm-hmm. going to miss you terribly, but I don't, I want you to go when you're ready. And it's funny because I've had that experience. I'm sure you have too, Lisa, where I've had people call me and uh, the one time, uh, you know, I couldn't get them back on the phone and their little dog came through while I was cooking dinner. I'm standing mm-hmm. at the stove cooking dinner and, uh, you know, their little dog, uh, you know, Jakey came through and all he said to me is, I'm ready, I'm ready, I'm ready. Mm-hmm. And I thought, oh, I know what he's saying. He's saying t- to his mom, I'm ready, let me go. Mm-hmm. And uh, in this case, uh, thankfully, uh, she is such so connected to her dog, she got it. And, mm-hmm. and they were at the vet's office and uh, they let him go then. But it's true. It's like they'll just hold on, won't they? Yeah, they really will. And what I've found is that sometimes there are people who in their heads they know that they need to be letting them go. Mm-hmm. So they say those words. Yeah. They say, yes, you can go. But in their hearts, they really, really haven't, haven't they're, they're not really touched it, touching it in their hearts. Yeah. And so the animals will still pick up on that, and, and they will still hang on. And then I, when we have the conversation, and I have this conversation with their pet parents, what I, have, what I will know, notice happens is that all of a sudden, once the pet parent really, really gets it, and they take it into their heart, mm-hmm. then within a couple of days, the pet may, the animal may take a turn for the worse so that the, the parent says, oh, okay, I get it, it's time. Right, right. It's like that they show them something that makes sure that they understand that and know that. Because as we've talked uh, here before on, on the show, but animals don't necessarily just read the words. They read your thoughts. It's, it's telepathy. And it's, so you might be saying one thing, but inside that's not what's going on, and they're reading what's inside. Right, it's feeling the energy, and you said, and you said one other thing I wanted to to reference. Um, what I found too, and I don't know if you guys have it out, have as many out there as we do here, is that I found that so many animals ask to pass at home when they ask for the help, but they want to do it at home, and out here. We've, we've started to have a lot of veterinarians who do nothing but pet euthanasia at home. Mm-hmm. And it's a great resource. Of course, you can't always, you know, I mean, you, might, you know, people that live in more rural areas and stuff like that, you, you know, people can always call their vets because sometimes vets, even, even if they don't say that they will, if you've been with a vet for a long time and you really want your pet to pass at home, they, if you call your vet, they may, they may do it for you. Some of them will come out to the house and do it for you. But there are more and more places where um, there's a place out here called Paws into Grace, and I actually, I actually had this woman's um, website on my website for a while, and then I happened to meet her at a, at a event we were both doing at the same time and you know i got to talk to her and and she was um she talked about it and she said you know i worked in a veterinary office for for so long and i saw these people bringing their their pets into the office and these pets were so scared and they were in a place that they didn't know and and it was it was just it just didn't seem right so i started this and she just, that's all she does. She doesn't do any other kind of vet care. She just 
does pet euthanasia, and I've I've referred a lot of my clients to her, and they've they've had a lot of I've got a lot of lot of good feedback. You know, I mean, obviously it's going to be individual for whoever does yeah. it, but you know, you have to be a specific type of person to be able to oh, it's do hard. that. I sure couldn't. Yeah, and I I have to tell you, uh, Lisa, we actually are uh, blessed to have at least one service in our area. Uh, it's called Peaceful Pet Passage for everybody out there listening. And we had Dr. Elizabeth Carney come on uh, the show uh, a little while back to talk about her work doing in-home euthanasia. And I'm going to give everybody that number. Uh, It's 717-691-9214, 717-691-9214, Peaceful Pet Passage. Because Dr. Carney, that's what she does too, uh, Lisa, and I thought, my goodness, what a service for her. And I know sometimes it weighs heavily on her, Mm -hmm. you know, but, uh, you know, I keep reminding her. And it was so... um, gratifying for her because after she was on the show there were people who emailed me saying oh my goodness you know she's such an angel I don't know what I would have done without her and I and I forwarded all those to her and just made her feel so good about what she does oh I'm sure that's yeah. wonderful yes I'm sure and and you know I think it's something that people don't really know is available um, right right you know, I mean, they just always traditionally we've always had to schlep the cats, the pets down to the the vet and and put them through this torment of getting in the carriers or or being afraid. Uh, however, they are when they have to go to the vet, yeah. you know, and uh, and for that particular ride, and it's it's just a terrible, terrible thing to have to do, and and it's just it's. It's so much different being able to do it at home where they're surrounded by everybody they love. Everybody that they yeah, love and yeah. their environment. I mean, think about people, you know. I was going to say, don't we all say we, we want to yeah. go at home? At oh. home, that's right. Oh. Okay, Lisa, we're going to take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more uh, talk with Lisa Larson. Heart to Heart is being brought to you by Zunich Advisory Services on Real Country 1280, WHVR, Hanover. It's time now for more Heart to Heart, brought to you by Zunich Advisory Services with Jackie LeBeau. Okay, we're back, and we're talking about end-of-life issues, and my guest this morning is Lisa Larson. So, Lisa, we were talking about... um, you know, that difficult decision of when you need to do something and possibly help uh, your animal with euthanasia. And I remember years and years ago with our first dog, she was suffering from bone cancer. And I remember standing there with our vet, who I love to death, you know, Dr. John Fawcett. And I was like, well, how will I know? What? When is the time? When is the time? And he looked at me and he said, you'll know. And I thought that was not helpful. <laughs> Well, I had, uh, it's interesting that you say that because I actually had a, a, a similar experience with a vet, only he gave me a different answer. And it's an answer that I have used with my clients over and over over the years. And he said, he asked me, he said, what is her quality of life? And he says, if you were to give a percentage, and he said, if it's, Seventy percent that she is still really enjoying what she loves to do. She's, you know, eating eating just like she's always eaten. She lays in the sun. She stretches out. She likes her hugs and purrs and everything else. And thirty percent that she's not feeling very good, not very good quality of life. Then maybe it's not time. But if it's the other way around, if it's thirty mm. percent that she's enjoying things, but 70% that she's not having a very good quality of life, then it's probably time. I like and that. that. Yeah, and that has helped so much. I mean, obviously, it's still you still have to make that decision, and you still have to look at these things. And the other thing is, you know, one, I always used to think that it was if they stopped eating, that was the defining thing. Mm -hmm. And many times it is. More times than not, it is. But I have seen cases since I've been doing this work where animals that maybe they've got 
like thyroid issues or they've got they're on prednisone or something like that where they will continue to eat but they will still be ready to go because they would be so miserable so you can't take just (laughs) one of those things right and say okay well if it's it's eating then fine i'm just going to keep you know not make the decision you have to take a look at that percentage of quality of life how much are they enjoying life and if if really that percentage is not very high, then maybe it's time to release them from their bodies. Yeah, I like that. That's a, that's a good way because people can really look at the different things. And, um, it's, and it's probably a good idea as you're looking at that percentage. I know people are like, well, I don't want to do it too soon. I don't want to do it too soon. I don't want to take one day away from them. But that's probably not the best way to look at it. Right. My saying is better a day too early than a day too late because the way that I see it and from my own experience as well is that, you know, when we, when we hold on for them a, an extra day, an extra day, it's not holding on for them. It's holding on for us. Yes, I it's agree. It's holding on because we <clears throat> want that extra day. And I always tell my clients, you know, in 10 years, if you, um, if you do it a day too early, then you're going to just remember their lives and remember that they didn't suffer like they would have. If you do it a day too late, then you're, not, you're going to be more focused on that one extra day. Not, not that you had an extra day with them, but you're going to be focused on that one extra day thinking, oh, my God, I made them suffer. Yeah. Or they suffered. Or <clears throat> it wasn't worth, just like what we were talking earlier, yeah. it wasn't worth keeping them alive for no. me. No. I, right, exactly, because that's what I said. I, I don't want to ever do this again because I, I you know, knew I had done it for myself. So Exactly. And, and you know, it's interesting because... When um, when I got married, my husband had never had a cat, and I had a cat coming into the marriage, but then we adopted, well, a cat adopted us. Yes, I was going to say, they always choose him. us. <laughs> <laughs> and it was my husband's first cat that he had a real connection with, and he had never had to make the decision to um, to help an animal cross. And when we realized that that cat was very, very ill and it was, it was getting to be that time, I was, you know, saying what we're talking about now, obviously not with the same experience, but um, from personal experience. And um, he had a really difficult time with that, but we did make that decision. That's when we talked to the vet. That happened to be that time when we talked to the vet. Mm-hmm. And um, it was that vet. And... Um, what we came across, came away with, what he's come away with, is that he feels so relieved having done it when we did, mm-hmm. rather than having seen other things since. Right. That he wouldn't have wanted to. Right. He do. would, and you, you know, you just really—it's so sad to have that as your last memories. You know, mm-hmm. to see that kind of suffering. So, oh, good. And that's what we were kind of talking about earlier. If we, you know, if you have somebody, if you listen to something like what we're talking about, if you talk to people like <laughs> the people that you, the, you know, the people that you've had on your show mm-hmm. and the vet that you've had on right. your show and you hear them talk, then maybe you don't have to have that experience with that. Maybe you, you know, just like my husband you know, fortunately, he had that kind of support, and, and not just me, but our vet and everything else. Um, <clears throat> you know, he didn't have to go through that same experience that you and I have gone through right? in, in waiting too long. Yeah, wonderful. So now that uh, you've, you've made that decision, <clears throat> what are some of the things that you can do after your pet passes? And, and I know you gave some of these things because you were uh, very unexpectedly interviewed by John Edward, of all people. <laughs> Congratulations, <laughs> Lisa. Thank you. Thank you. And I know you were uh, giving him some things someone can do once they have lost an animal. And these are things not only for the benefit of the person, 
but also for the benefit of other animals that may be in your uh, family as well, right? Exactly. Yeah, one of the things that I always tell people, and this I've gotten just by talking to other animals, uh, talking to the animals who are grieving, is that we have rituals for a reason. You know, we have rituals, things like birthdays, funerals, graduations, all of these things, they, they tell our subconscious that we are saying hello or we are saying goodbye. And it puts things, these things that we're saying goodbye to, it puts them at rest. And so it's very important to have some sort of little memorial or service. And when you do that, if you have animals who have also lost their pet siblings, right. <clears throat> their pet buddies, right. make them a part of it. You know, do it in the same room with them. Let them be, just like we were talking about earlier, that they pick up on our energy. They understand what we're thinking because when we think, when we speak, we speak words with intent. When we think, we, we, we emit that energy, and our animals feel those things. And if we are doing a service of some, you know, whether it's just sitting and lighting a little candle or... Um, you know, reading something that, you know, talking about how you love them or whatever, how, let them be a part of it because that really impresses in their subconscious, what I call the coup in Hawaiian. Uh -huh. um, it impresses their coup as well so that they can get some closure and say goodbye as well. So, now, Lisa, just I'll backtrack just real quick here, but... <clears throat> Animals know when another family member animal is passing, right? Mm -hmm. I find that, too, because they always say, well, they won't know, you know, that they're dying. And I'm saying, yes, they do. Mm -hmm. They do, but what I found is that animals, just like people, may be more or less, um, you know, we talk about having... You know, we t hear about people having being a wise soul, a wise old soul, you know, that they have knowledge maybe that they've brought in from before, <laughs> you right, know. Right. And I feel that animals are that way, too. I do feel that, they, that <laughs> animals know when they've passed, when their buddies have passed. But I don't feel that all of them know to the same degree, understand to the same degree, because some of them may be a little bit more um, focused in the present moment, focused in their own bodies, mm -hmm. because there may be younger souls. But I also say, I also tell them when, like, if, if you're going to have a pet pass at home, it's good. Now, the, the animals, the other animals don't have to be in the room as the, you know, as the vet is there, but it is, it, you know, do, doing what they're doing. But it's good to have the animals come and let them see the body afterwards okay. because even if they know and this is just my experience mm -hmm. even if they know on on that level that you're talking about on on another level it makes it easier for them to see because then it's like i know it's come almost like a confirmation for what they know okay right do you, do you know what i mean <clears throat> right, and then they see the, the sort of the result, and they can start to process that and, and, you know, put that away, too, for themselves. Exactly, because I look at, you know, when I talk to animals, and I'm sure you're, you're the same, I kind of see them, it's, it's almost like I can talk to them on two different levels. I can talk to their higher self, which is, you know, the, the part of the animal that is is has all this knowledge and stuff like that and then I can talk to their their little conscious self because that's where their conscious mind is focused and their conscious self if they if they are able to see that body then that it impresses their higher self so I get it I get what I've been feeling all of these energies that I've been feeling oh this impresses their conscious self Okay, and that makes sense because, you know, they can sense what's going on, but it make, pulls it all together for them as yeah, well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 
Well, believe it or not, Lisa, we're, we're coming to a close very shortly. We have about two minutes, so I would like you to tell people how to find you on the internet because you have such a wealth of information and wisdom on your site. Uh, thank you. My uh, animal site is pawstalk.net. Paws, like animal paws, paws talk, P A W S T A L K dot net. Wonderful, wonderful. <clears throat> and you have, and then also, Lisa, do you do you have a, a phone number? Or do you just have people contact you on the web? Uh, yeah, it's seven six zero four 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 zero eight one one. Okay, wonderful, wonderful. And and I and I also have some information on my psychic mediumship on that page and I've also got, you know, another another page for my my mediumship which there's links all over. Good. Like, and and, and I'm is that is, all over the <clears throat> All right, now, give me let's say the number one more time, the phone number. 760 760 444 0811. Okay, and then your uh, mediumship, Lisa, is that a separate site? That's a separate site. So go ahead and give everybody that as well. It's spiritcat with two A's dot com, spiritcaat dot com. Okay, and that, that C-A-A-T, is that a nickname for you, Lisa? I've seen that a couple places. Yeah, it's, it's kind of like my moniker. <laughs> I like that. <laughs> I like great. that. Cat, so, so that's great. I love that, the C-A-A-T. All right, well, I'll tell you, there's so much more we could talk about, and there's so many more things we can tell people about, that they can do after their pet passes, so... We might just have to have you come back and uh, spend another morning with us. That would be wonderful. Okay, Lisa. Thank you so much for calling in from California. And uh, we'll talk to you again someday. It's been wonderful. Sounds, sounds great. Thank you so much, Jackie. You have a great day. All right, you too. Bye-bye. Okay, this portion of Heart to Heart is being brought to you by Zunich Advisory Services. Okay, that was wonderful with Lisa Larson this morning. And she is such a wealth of information and wisdom about animals. And her pages are wonderful. So if you get a chance, uh, check her out, okay? And next week, uh, my guest will be Aviana Castro. Uh, she's another uh, Lisa Williams friend. And she's a well-known intuitive. Aviana is considered one of the pioneers of the mediumship movement throughout the world and has been recognized as one of the most accurate spiritual mediums by her clients. Her messages have brought solace, peace, and spiritual insights, changing people's view of life, their passion, and purpose. Aviana was born with a gift to see beyond the veil and shares her insights through her readings and writings. She continues to expand her knowledge by learning from world-renowned spiritual teachers and avatars, but most importantly, through her own divine connection with spirit. So Aviana will be a joy next uh, week, so please tune in to see her. And again, I remind people, if there's a way that I can help you, either with ones that you love that have passed or your animals who have passed or that are still in the present, uh, give me a call. My office number is 717 717- 968-5289 or visit my website JackieLeBeau.com that's J-A-C-Q-U-I-L-E B-E-A-U.com Okay, we'll see you next week. Have a good week, everyone. Heart to Heart with Jackie LeBeau is brought to you by Zunich Advisory Services. The news is coming up next. ABC News at the top of the hour.